Yes. You know, and it seemed like you got a full house. And, uh, you know, how did you find out about, you know, this, this area? You know, um, well, I'm, I'm from the Cleveland area, and my friend Elisa uh, works here. And um, so I just came here with her. I'm visiting with her uh, this evening, and she works here. So I came with her to see what it was about and to just be with her and the people here. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, there's a lot of people um, who don't have homes, um, who don't have houses, and uh, have to get by on the street. And so I think places like this are, are really necessary. Um, and the government doesn't really help a whole lot with that. So it's up to independent organizations to try to meet the need, which is really hard to do. And I mean, like they're doing the best that they can, but it's not, um, I mean, it's not enough, unfortunately. But um, I, I think places like this are a really good thing for that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't know that much about economics and um, politics, but I know for sure that we are, you know, we are the wealthiest nation and we have a lot of wealth, you know, overall, but there's, I think that that's ridiculous that we have that much wealth overall, and there's so many people that you see sleeping on the streets, you know, um, without a place to go and uh, not enough money to get food and stuff like that. So, um, I mean, I think that the government could definitely be doing a lot to help the the issue. Exactly what they need to be doing, you know, I that that's a topic I don't know as much about, but um, they could be doing a lot more to help. Well, it seems like the Catholic workers, uh, you know, uh, are doing a good job here in the spirit of Dorothy Day. And, uh, Thank yeah. God for them. Yep, amen to that. All right, take care. Thanks. Uh, what is your name? My name is Chris Nestrick. Uh, how long have you been uh, volunteering here and helping out? Uh, well, I've been part of the Catholic Worker community for about two years since I graduated college. Uh, and have you seen the need uh, increase in two years? Uh, I don't know. I, I think the study flow of people that come in here has been the same. I think I mean, obviously the need around the world and in Cleveland in particular has, has grown in those last two years. but. Uh, the work we do here has been steady since the beginning. What kind of services do you have here? Well, we're we're just a simple place that really uh, we bring we do laundry for folks. We have food that we share with folks. We have lockers that people can use. Uh, people are able to shower if they come in here. Uh, we have hygiene products people can pick up. Sure, sure, you can call us at 216-631-3059. And, uh, and what times are you open here? And what's the address again? We're open uh, every night from 7 to 9, and our address is 4241 Lorraine, and it's the Catholic Worker Drop-In Center. Yeah, and just one more question. Uh, a lot of people out there uh, don't know about Dorothy Day and what a heavy person she was. You know, can you, uh, you know, can you just say something about Dorothy Day and that spirit of, uh, of her? That, uh, yeah. The spirit, spirit of Dorothy Day is kind of what we, what the Catholic Worker is founded on, and we attempt to, uh, to take personal responsibility for need in our communities, and we do that here at our drop-in center at the Catholic Worker, and also at our uh, house of hospitality. And it's uh, taking personal need and not asking people to uh, do things for us like the government, but taking a personal account to the needs around our community and really just to really do the works of mercy. Well, hey, thanks a lot. My name is Ralph Damron. Uh, how long have you been coming to this uh, Catholic Worker Center? Uh, since it uh, opened up, man, before they built McCaffrey's. Uh -huh. yeah, I used to be an old food co-op here years ago. I used to work here, volunteer. Yes, with Mike Lerner. Uh -huh. you know, uh, uh, do you see a lot of need out here uh, in the streets of Cleveland because Cleveland is the poorest city in the nation? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I mean, there's uh, people that need help. And there's also people that's got the right mind and bodies, man, to work. 
They just don't have a place to go to get up on time to go to work. Uh, uh, do you think we need more places like this to be helping people, like especially housing? It keeps people off the streets and gives a friendly atmosphere. Yes, everyone's uni 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 united here. That's the way it goes. Yeah, you know, it seems like you know um, uh, they do really good work for. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I I see it everywhere. I you know, they really care. It's a blessing. It's rarely a blessing. I mean, people taking their own time to uh, volunteer their work, man, to help other people. It's a blessing. Well, hey, uh, thanks a lot, sir, and God bless you, brother. God bless you. you got um, uh, what is your name? Uh, Patrick McCafferty. Uh, how long have you been volunteering here? I've been volunteering here since uh, last year, uh, the end, end of December. Uh, do you see a lot of need out here, uh, a lot more hungry people? Uh, sure do. Uh, we're pretty busy every night. Uh, Meals over at St. Pat's are always busy and everything. Uh, uh, you know, how can you volunteer if somebody wants to volunteer here? Uh, what uh, would they have to do? None. Just stop on by. And uh, what's the address? Uh, I do not. I know it's Lorraine. Okay. Lorraine Road, storefront right across the street from McCafferty Center. Right. Do you see a lot more people out here um, trying to get uh, active and concerned about what's going on in the world and our, in our community? Uh, with the Catholic workers, yes. That, that's their philosophy is helping out the community. Uh, All right. I like the philosophy also. Yeah, that's pretty cute. You're my hero. You know, uh, but brother man, hey, thanks for your uh, contribution for humanity, brother. No problem. Hey, thanks a lot. How long have you been volunteering here? For about three years. Uh, do you see a lot more need in the neighborhood and, and a lot more hungry people that uh, go without food? Um, yes and, and no. I think that fortunately we are um, in a neighborhood that have a lot of uh, food centers. So um, I think that, uh, I, I think that um, there's no need for anyone to go hungry living, living in our neighborhood because of all the food centers that we have. Um, so I think uh, we're fortunate for that. Um, how can somebody um, volunteer here? Is there a phone number or somebody a uh, contact person? You can just come here and talk to the volunteers that are working the kitchen and just uh, let them know that you're interested in volunteering and they can set up some kind of schedule. Right. And yeah, you take donations of food and what else? Kind of we, uh, we take uh, monetary donations, food, clothing. Um, we put out a mailing uh, every couple of months called the... Um, Right now, I can't think of what it's called, but we usually post on that newspaper um, what our current needs are. But generally, you know, soap and sh uh, shampoo, conditioner, lotion, razors, you know, those are the, the main things that we use here that we usually need. And socks during the winter, hats and gloves. But, um, I mean, anything, we welcome any kind of donations. And uh, um, uh, uh, what is the address and the phone number if somebody wants to contact or stop by? The current address for here, I really don't know what it is, but the volunteers that run this uh, storefront uh, live at the Catholic Worker, which is 3601 Whitman Avenue, and that phone number is 631-3059, and they can speak to either Peter, Chris, or Joe, and let them know that they have donations or would like to volunteer here, and they can set that up for them. Well, uh, thank you very much for your uh, contribution to humanity. Thank you. Jamil. You know, um, do you come here often? Uh, like, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, what do you think, you know, about in Cleveland and what's going on here in the streets and how a lot of people are hurting out down here? And it seems like, you know, our government, and we're not really paying much mind to it, you know, about people's needs. What do I think? Yes. I think some things are just priority over others. You know? New Orleans proves that. Yes, it has. Yeah, so, yeah you know. like you all. Uh, do you feel that we need a movement in this country, like in the 60s, like the civil rights movement, to start fighting for people's rights and try to make a better world for all? 
Yeah, movement, but not like a physical movement, more like a spiritual movement. Right. Physical movement, I think it turns into something. It starts out good, but after a while, it just turns into a bunch of noise that we can basically sweep up under the rug. Right. You know, so we need something within, something real. It might be abstract, but it's. I, I, I think it's a little more concrete than just having marches and protests and rallies, because what does that accomplish? Other than a bunch of noise. Right. But you know, but uh, during the civil rights movement, um, it changed the world. Yeah. In, in, in a lot of aspects. I mean, all the sacrifices of the great leaders like Martin Luther King. And right. But I think times change. Right. You know, and if certain people have certain priorities, they know how to. I don't know that. You know, they say you learn from history. So, I, th I think those the results have probably already been countered before the results are even in, you know? It's, um, it's really not gonna accomplish anything. I think it'd be more important, I think it'd be more powerful if people internalize some sort of change or some, some, some sort of growth as far as how they think and how they interact with society and, and priorities as far as charity or just uh, being social as opposed to just this wealthy thing that everybody's on, this materialistic thing. And, and I think that's where... Do we need a good dose of love on this planet to start you know, treating each other like brothers and sisters? Yeah. Yeah, and I think for a, a, a variety of reasons. But, um, yeah, even, even with that, I think it has to be internalized. Until we internalize that everything is just smoke and mirrors, it's a, it's a bunch of talk and a bunch of lip service and a bunch of smiles and whatnot for the for the newspaper people. But the genuine thing is going to be when people generally start loving and, and looking out for one another. Until so then, we'll still be up the same creek that we've been stuck in for a minute. Regardless of who's running the government and who's calling the shots, regardless of who has the money. Well, brother, man, thanks for that wisdom, man. Thank you. Thank your you. name again? Jamil. Well, hey, honor to meet you, brother. Thank you.